I'm L.A. Little, and this is your weekly T.A. Wrap, where we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective and ask ourselves what happened last week, and what does it tell us about the coming one. I do the show once a week, every Sunday night, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, although that is changing, and we do it four times a week on the daily show also changing both time changes be aware we're moving back one hour we're gonna start at eight o'clock Eastern starting tomorrow so if you're you know, hopefully that works for you if not uh, you'll have to catch the uh, you know not the live show but the uh, the rap uh, either here on YouTube uh, but uh, it's just we I just need to change the time uh, this comes out too late uh, need to change the time so hopefully uh, that will work for you as well as for us so what happened last week well it was more of the same uh, another big change another big uh, uh, move to the upside uh, we, we've seen it over and over again every time uh, there appears to be uh, some sort of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a pullback or at least a pause. The continuation of the trend continues, and that and that continuation, you know, is is dynamite. I mean, it has been since November of last year, pretty much straight up, right? There really hasn't been much else. You had one little pullback here and another one there. Uh, both of those amounted to something like four and a half, five percent top to bottom. They weren't that big. Uh, this one was even smaller. It was about, I think it was about three and a half to four. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we're talking about straight up here, and so far, pretty much straight up here. We had the pause uh, in this area, but uh, other than that, the market just continues climbing, and and I don't know that there's anything at this point that's going to stop it into the end of the year. You've got you've got a breakaway now that is extended higher. It is suspect. The fact that it's suspect says that it can come back, right, and do the retest regen, you know, back down off of this bar. That that retest regen could could actually get to the bottom as I talked about last week. I don't expect it to happen. Uh, we got the continuation push higher here, right? You got everything you wanted in terms of the move. The only thing that you have now is you kind of have round resistance at uh, 1800 on this particular index. And as we'll see on some of the others, 
as we switch over to the uh, IXIC, which is the NASDAQ, you've kind of got a round resistance that uh, potentially can come in here now at the 4,000 number. But this one also broke out on the daily last week. We had talked about that that's what needed to happen. That is what happened. It happened on the NDX. If we look over at the Dow, the Dow just keeps plugging away and pushing higher. And it's kind of fascinating because those 30 stocks, if you really look at how they're growing, they're growing by buying back their shares. You know, you're, you're, you're taking and reducing the, uh, the, 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 the multiples, right? Because there's not as many shares out there. So the stock actually looks... Uh, cheaper on a multiple basis um, but this thing just keeps plowing forward looks just like the S&P the one that's got to play catch up now and the one that probably will play catch up is the Russell if we look at the Russell the Russell's coming back into uh, you know this high over here is the high it also did what it needed to last week and that is is it got back over this remember last week when we were doing this it was still under it in this area and then it also got back into the big bar. That was that was kind of a little zone down here that was holding it. So when, last week when we were looking at it, we were down in this area. Now we got the push back above it. That says it's going to attack these highs. I would expect it does it pronto this week. What's the best case scenario? Well, you actually break out here and you actually keep going and you don't have round number resistance. That would be a better scenario than I envision. I expect you're going to see some sort of a pause uh, as a result of round number resistance. So, so far, so good. There's really nothing wrong with it. You know, for, for three weeks there, and I'm going to flip back one more time to the S&P, for just about three weeks there, we were taking and, and hesitating. We weren't getting good signals. We really couldn't do anything right while we were in this area. As we were in this area, we had to wait. We had to wait on some sort of a sign that, in fact, this market was going to move higher, really to put on any kind of uh, larger uh, trade. Once we got that, then, of course, we could. And, uh, and that is exactly what we did in our portfolios. Hopefully, you did it on yours once we got the breakout. The whole time, though, I continue to say you got to lean long. That's the trend. That's what we continue to do. It eventually paid off to lean long. Um, you know, all we had was one pullback that was immediately bought, a takeaway bar, the very next bar, and uh, that was it. I mean, there was nothing else in that consolidation uh, that stood out. If we look at the sectors, and, oh, and one last thing here is all of these now, and I'll, I'll draw it in one more time, all these now have ABCD structures in place. You've got an A point here, the A point, the B point, and now we're going for the, you know, the, the C was down here, and now you're going for the D. Uh, that, that measurement up there is a, almost 1860, right? We're trading at just under 1800, so that's another 60 points if this thing wants to tack it on. It's another 3.5% from where we're at. So that's still a good percentage this thing can move. Will it go straight up there? Probably not. Will it get up there? Well, it's looking more and more like it has a good chance of doing that. Now what we might see though is that while we're on our way, and I suspect we will see at some point, is we're going to see another ABCD structure probably set up somewhere inside this one. So the large one and then the smaller one somewhere in here and both of them would actually project up to that same area. And that probably is the sort of setup that we'll see here at some point. Will it come right away? I don't know. Uh, will we even get it? Don't know that either. If you get it, it probably makes the whole move and the potential for that move stronger. So from that perspective, I think you want to keep looking uh, on any kind of a retrace as probably an opportunity, uh, not as something you should run from. Uh, if we go over and look at the sectors, they are starting to show the same sort of thing. And what I mean by that is that you're starting to see a lot of these uh, begin to show us ABCD structures as well, uh, starting to take place and starting to see breakouts. And so uh, as we get the IYT to come up here, uh, you're going to see it here on this screen. 
uh, you can see the breakout on the on the weekly already in this area but uh, here comes the daily now and if we do this you can see the same sort of a thing that's taking place here right in an ABCD structure it takes it quite a bit higher and if I go over and look at uh, you know for example the IYT where could it go to it's another six and a half percent higher I mean these are not small numbers uh, will it get there by the end of the year or beginning of next well yeah it certainly has the potential uh, these have been extremely strong and um, I don't see anything in them right now to tell us to think otherwise so as long as we see that kind of uh, behavior we have to just stay with it you know they say the trend is your friend until it ends and it really is and you can't just assume it's going to end yeah at some point it will but that thing may go up a long way before it ever does so for so for now you know you simply stay with the trends uh, the only thing I'm not going to go through all of these uh, I will look at a couple the semiconductors for example they look to be range bound uh, they can't really get out of their own way here volume has been high so you kind of got this range bound at some point more than likely they will try to break out as well uh, they're trying to inch back up to the top I expect they're going to try to test the highs uh, we'll see if they can actually get over it or not uh, another one that we should probably look at is the uh, discretionary consumer discretionary because we're coming into that time of the year uh, you know when it gets on everybody's mind Thanksgiving next week um, you know you can already see they're buying in front of the news right so I would expect that this guy will probably push forward until we get that news uh, where can it go it looks like it's got about another two percent in it judging the ABCD structure where's that structure we can draw it out here you know you take the, the lowest point to the first pullback and then you pull it forward right so that's another two two and a half percent to get up to that level uh, another one that actually is is starting to look very interesting is is healthcare, and I'm seeing some of the uh, healthcare stocks, uh, some of the healthcare plans, uh, all of those are starting to get some juice in them. If I look at this sector, you know this one actually could move uh, a decent amount too, another two percent or so, uh, before it would uh, uh, run out of juice. So. I think that in general you got to think there's another couple percent left in these at least most of them right across the board uh, one of them that broke out last week that we've been watching is the financials uh, on the weekly basis the financials actually really you know they've been consolidating now if we go look at those guys uh, for a good uh, what is it about three months now that they've been consolidating here's the breakout on the daily and here's the consolidation this is back to May and this is what November so that's what is that four months four months across pretty much across now it's got you know it does have you know a little bit of a, a upward bias to it right as it's been going up but really the consolidation was from here to here you know all this time we just got the confirmed breakout here over this high just barely enough volume on it uh, but that's a break here we've got a clean break here on two swing points on the way up so I believe this is going to get more juice it's going to carry a little bit farther up here uh, before it reaches whatever its target is and comes back financials these guys uh, one of the largest you know groups in the S&P the financials right that's not the grade that's the financials larger one of the largest ones right the first, the main three are technology energy and the financials if we look at the energy sector it too is getting ready to break out uh, so we've got the same sort of thing over here XLE breaks uh, it actually didn't break there get this off but here's the breakout you can see the the higher um, the trend transition bar suspect so it can come back and test immediately but these guys are trying to break out as well and and remember this was the one the only one that was trying to break down 
and it was unable to do so. Now it's flipped around going back the other way. Uh, let's go look at the ox sectors uh, because there's actually a couple things that are worth looking at. But for the most part, you know, you're, you've already heard pretty much what I'm thinking, and that is is that these markets are going to want to try to, you know, continue to continue to stretch higher. The two things on the ox sectors: uh, one is the um, uh, the dollar. Uh, the other one is the bonds. Uh, those are probably the two main ones that have some effect uh, with respect to our markets, our equity markets. Uh, let's pop into those. And I really don't have a long show because you know when you're when you're all bullish and there really isn't any signals yet to tell us to do anything but to stay that way. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about. I'm not going to sit here and make stuff up just to have something to talk about. Um, we do have ABCD structures in place here on the ox markets in some of these uh, sectors and if I can get over on my spreadsheet to the dollar, let me go find the dollar over here uh, here it is so we've got a ABCD structure that that comes in from here back down a little small retrace and it shoots up to about I think it's about this area about 22 22 11 or so it's it's had a pullback here again this is the second one right but you had the first one that's where you measure from down in here uh, but you know what it's going to do is it's going to create a second one here if in fact this happens and it turns and that second one's going to take it right about to the same spot so I would think that you're going to see the dollar try to flip around if that happens, right? Because it's coming back into this big bar right now, 2173, it's at 2176. It's going to test into the bottom of this bar and probably flip around, go back, retest here on this high, potentially get over it. And if so, uh, you know, take it back up to that 2211 area, which is up in there. That's going to give you two nested ABCD structures, which says more than likely you'll get there. That's the first thing to realize. And the second thing is if it does that, then what we're probably going to see is we're probably going to see some weakness come back in the commodity sectors, in particular gold and silver and uh, the, uh, the oil, the copper, all those markets, right? You would see weakness come into them. So if you're playing these markets long, I think you need to be a little careful here because you may see some more pressure come back into them if in fact that dollar flips around and that is looking that is what it looks to try and do. Now, gold already had one test, you know, of these lows and it held, which was a good test. Remember we talked about it last week, you had this bar, you came in and tested it. You had no volume as you tested and that led to it to flip around and work its way back up. The problem is, is now it's back up into resistance and it hasn't been able to get over it. That tells me that more than likely you're going to come down and you're going to test this one more time and you're going to see if you can break it or not. If we look at the, if we look at the same market on a weekly basis, remember there is volume here at the bottom. And so there's nothing to say that this thing can't break this area and work its way back down to test that low on the weekly basis. So again, if you're in gold, if the dollar does start to strengthen and the euro starts to drop, gold's probably going to try to test that bottom and try to break it one more time. And, and you know, you don't want to go again, the trend is your friend. You don't want to go against the trend. If you are, you don't want to go against it very long, right? The trend is down still, is definitely down over here. Even though you're seeing some sort of push once to the top side, right? It hasn't been able to get another one. And until it does, right, you got to respect the trend. And if you're counter trend trading it, you don't want to stick around too long on your counter trend trades. Uh, let's see here. What, what was the other thing? Oh, oil. Let's look at oil right quick. The oil market um, has had a lot of pressure on it. And you talk about a trend on the weekly and the monthly trends. And here it is here on the weekly and monthly trends, 
you know, that trend has been sideways, right? It's pretty much sideways here, right? We're not getting, we're not getting a push up anymore. We've had a pull back down, right? We went up, came back down. That was straightaway move. You've got two long tails down here on the bottom right now, which says this thing's trying to flip around. Now, of course, if the dollar starts to strengthen, uh, that's going to make it harder for this thing to, to actually turn. We saw one, and I've pointed this out before, we saw one spike up on some volume. Could have been just short covering. So far, it hasn't, you know, we haven't got another sign yet. We did test the lows. We weren't able to break them. This does look like a decent counter trend trade to try to come back up and test this area here, which is the top of that in this big bar, big volume here. If it gets over it, right, then it can go all the way back and do a swing point low retest regen, but of course it's got to get over it to start with. Again, if the dollar gets strong, it's going to be hard for this thing to move up there, but right now it does still appear that that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to get back up and test one more time. Watch it carefully if you're trying to trade it because it could turn on you. Uh, let me see, what is the other one? No, I think that's it. So those are the main ones. Uh, let me take a quick look at the junk bonds and then I'm open to any questions you may have and if you don't have any questions then I'll probably just talk about something else rather than the technicals. So here's junk bonds coming back into swing point high. They have the volume. It looks to me like it's going to close that gap. Finally which again is is saying the equities are strong. You had a little gap up in here, it looks like it's going to close it. And it came up to test that swing point high and wasn't able to. So the, the real test this week is to test this swing point high. That high and this are the same. If it can get over it, right, then it can actually move back up to test back into this area, which was the first breakdown off the highs. And that's where all the volume came in. So Let's, let me see what that price point is. 41.38. So that would be quite a move if it gets back up there. Uh, the T oh, I, did I forget the TLT? Let me go back. I was going to do the TLT. Uh, thanks, Tommy. So TLT. The, the interesting part about the TLT, and I've got it on the weekly over here, we'll start there, is that you know, we, we had two legs down, right? And, and this one was a, a vicious one. And when we had those legs down, just like we were talking about on the oil market, you had one area where the buyers came in and pushed this thing up, right? So now they came back to test that low. And they've done it on less volume comparatively. That says this thing is going to try to flip around. It's going to try to flip around and head back up. Now, if you're trying to trade it that way, you've got to respect that low right there. And that's, you know, I had good volume on the low, but you had better volume coming off of it. So you've got to respect the low. The last time we came down here, really on a daily basis, your low, that zone in and it's moved at this point, but that zone was right here. Came into it hard on this bar with the big volume, and then the volume went away when it tested right here. That was a great sign, said it was trying to bounce. That's exactly what it's done. At this point, I would expect, because we're into that swing point retest regen now, that's the low, the high it can get to is all the way back up here at the top of this bar. What you don't want to see it do if you're trying to trade long the bonds and if you're already long them is you don't want to see it break back underneath this, this bar's low. And if it does and you're long, you've got to exit your position. You can't, you've got to have your stop down here if, if you're long. What you're still shooting for is a test up into here to tell you whether it's going to retest, regenerate lower or is it not going to be able to and this thing is actually going to go back higher and right now the jury's out on which one it's going to be so the bar that you're really watching here is is the October 16th bar 
That's the bar that's in play right now. That's the bar that means everything. You get back underneath the low, you can go you can go right back down here and test it all again and try to break it out. I still don't think it's going to. I think it's going to hold in this area and I think it's going to range trade. And if I go over and, and look at the weekly chart, I expect what you're going to probably see is this thing is going to bounce up. It's going to range trade, you know, in this area for a while, right? And then potentially get all the way back up here to do a retest regen there, which will more than likely fail, right? Because you got huge volume here and that's your retest regen. If it can get up to that area, that's probably the best spot to try to short it. But that's a, that's a long wait. And you can see that's about halfway off that prior high. So you got first you got to get all the way back up here, and then you got to get over it and do half as much again, right, to get the great short. So my take here is that what you really want to do, and what I'd like to see this thing do, is actually come back down, show me that it can't break, and actually give me a good buy signal, right, with very low risk down in this area. That would be a nice setup. And that would give you a little ABCD structure, right? And then you could project up and then you would test the top of this bar. But we'll see if it turns out that way. But that's the way I analyze these charts. That's the way I look at them. I'm always looking for what could take place and then examining, right? So you, essentially, you know, it's no different than the, you know, when I say, <laughs> it's kind of interesting here. When I say transitioning trading from an art to a science, what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about what I just did. I'm saying, what is the thesis, right? And does this thing support it? You know, when we get to key places, does it support that thesis or not? If it doesn't, then you need to alter your thesis. Isn't that what you do in the scientific method? You postulate, you postulate what you expect is going to happen, and then you see what happens. Same thing here. It's no different. You're using the market, allowing it to tell you what it wants to do, you're constantly looking forward to see what it could do, and then you're seeing to see, then you're waiting to see at critical points is it doing it. And that's how you trade the market. That's how you read the tapes. Keep yourself out of trouble. Okay, what else you got, folks? Is that it tonight? Let me let me check my uh, text and check my emails. Make sure nobody's asked for anything here before I give it a night. Okay, text is, do we have a text? Nobody wants to text me. Nobody emails me. And, ah, we got another half of a question. At least you were talking about that bottom of that daily, 1118. Yeah, what about it? So this, this is the daily. This is, oh, I, did I say 18? That's actually the 16th. The 1181, um... Uh, 11, oh, that's 10. That's 10. I'm sorry. Let me go over here to where you're at. 11.8. 11.8 8 bar. That was the breakdown bar. Yeah, the big volume bar. Yeah, so, so what, you know, we had, we had two tests. We had, we had a test on the way down, and we tested, you know, let me draw it one more time. We had a test on the way down, and you can write any more if you want, you know, if, if I don't cover it. The 11.8 bar was this bar, right? And that, that was where all the volume came into it. But that was before you got to, to the area that you wanted to see test. Right? You want to see this. That's, that's an important bar. It's wide price spread, right? Top to bottom, wide price spread, and high volume. That's like double juice, right? The other one was over here, and that one's pretty wide price spread as well. So you had two of them lined up together to give you a little zone down here. And if you remember, we had a green zone at one point down in this area before we moved off of it. As you come into it, volume dissipates, right? Goes away. Sellers are not willing to sell at lower prices, especially after the straight down move. That allows you to bounce to do the retest, regen, and now this is the critical bar. Those were the bars of importance before. Now you're into this one. So as you come back now, right, you're going to have this area plus the top of this one, and that's where that zone's coming from now. That's going to make it hard to break down below this. So the ABCD structure I'm watching is this one, back down to this area, and if it can't break lower, 
then you get an ABCD structure up and you go test the top of this bar okay all right folks I've uh, spent my 30 minutes here I'm gonna give it up we have a change if you came on late that change is time and the time change if you go to TATV is an hour earlier we're gonna flip this around we're gonna come in here and do our shows earlier six o'clock my time eight o'clock Eastern time I just gotta make the change need to make the change I get my day over a little bit earlier uh, because uh, my days are busy as it is so thanks a lot tell friend tell two if you haven't checked out the new site we, we've done a lot of work we've cut over to a new structure all the videos we're doing now all the recordings we're doing now you can view on your mobiles so we did a, a huge change to the infrastructure a new look to the to the site if you're up here and you're looking around you know you can you can earn subscriber dollars there's some things that we've implemented uh, if you're not a member or even if you are a member either one you can refer somebody if they start up then you can earn dollars for it we've also got uh, a lot of other cool things that are coming so you know the site's just gonna get better and better I guess I should pull this over um, so you know hopefully uh, we will meet and exceed your needs that's what we keep trying to do so let us know give us feedback take care have a great one. Good night, folks.